On today's episode of Watch Jericho, I bought what used to be the cheapest Mercedes you could possibly spend your hard earned money on. And guess what? It was cheap. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jericho and today it's gonna be a very slow, painful episode for me. Not because of the car, I'm kind of excited about the car, but because I wrecked the uh, scooter earlier and I have road rash all over my arm. All I got 3D road rash here. It is everywhere, all the way up and down. And uh, you know, when you have road rash, it's so hard to move your arm. And uh, that's that's what I'm dealing with here. Got, got both hands, got the palms. I got it all. I went hard, ruined a shirt, ruined another pair of jeans. I, every pair of jeans I have, I've wrecked it, I'm pretty sure. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We are here to talk about my new, to me, 1996 Mercedes C220. Now I found this C220 because it was suggested to me on the old marketplace, and I thought, hmm, that looks pretty interesting, and I clicked on the ad, and it said, 1996 Mercedes, runs and drives. And then underneath it, it said, you can swing it with a smiley face. And I was sold at that point. I was like, man, if you can swing it, I'm in. So we're gonna go over that here in a bit, but uh, the rest of the ad said, needs head gasket, which was interesting. And uh, then it said, will run and drive for a short period. So, I mean, it was a run and drive with a star, that's for sure. But I'm not sure it has a blown head gasket because I don't see any milky coolant. We'll dig into that here in a bit. Let's first talk about the C220. Now, the C-Class in this generation, and the 220 in particular, was the cheapest car you could buy from Mercedes because the A-Class didn't exist at that point. And the 220 is from back in the old naming convention days of luxury cars, where uh, 220 means it's got 2.2 liters. And the zero, I don't know what they did with the zero, it was probably on there to make it look cool. Like the nameplate says, that's exactly what it is. It's powered by a 2.2 liter four cylinder. Now, some of you are probably Mercedes enthusiasts and you're thinking, well, you're wrong. There were cheaper four cylinders offered, a 1.8 and a 2.0. That was only in other countries. Here in the US, we got this as the basest of the base of the base models. Now that 2.2 liter engine here in the US is pretty anemic, especially for a car that looks honestly like a really good um, kind of the mobster sedan that you want. I, well, this one's lowered, of course. It's probably on cut springs. I don't know how it's lowered, but it looks huge. It weighs almost 4,000 pounds, and that four-cylinder only makes 150 horsepower and 150 foot-pounds of torque. Barely double the power a Miata makes takes 10.5 seconds to accelerate this giant brick to 60 mile an hour. Was there an AMG variant of the C-Class? Of course there was. It came out in 1995, and it was a 3.6 liter V6, meant to compete with all the sports cars, but this one is badged as an AMG, and I can guarantee you it's not. So let's walk around this old brick of a Mercedes and check it out. You can see the factory C220 badging back there in the nice chrome that it came in. And uh, there's the Mercedes star, and there is the AMG badge that is 100% fake on this car. Uh, we have tent peeling in the back window. We've got the power flip down headrests. You can see that those actually flop back into a little divot so that they uh, are flush and you don't see them in the mirror at all. It looks like there's a first aid kit back there, which is pretty cool. And I mean, honestly, the stance looks pretty good for what this car is. Now, of course, it's uh, leaking some oil. It did say it, it needed a head gasket, but that doesn't look like it needs a head gasket to me. It's a lot of brand new oil right there. The car is covered in some weird stuff. I don't know what this is. Uh, it looks like tar, but if you touch it, it just scratches right off. So it's kind of like uh, a dark gray mud. We've got tinted markers up front that really kind of set off the front end and make it look cool. If the windows were still tinted, it would look just right, honestly. It would have that panda look and it would be pretty cool. The paint's shot. Uh, it's a single, a mono wiper on this thing which is always very cool. Everybody loves to see the old mono wiper. It'd be even cooler if it was straight up in the center of the windshield like it was a race car. We've got a sunroof, which is probably a pretty premium feature back in 1996. The doors seem like they still work really well. Uh, look at this, the mirror is blue, which means it's probably auto dimming. How fancy is that? A C-Class Mercedes auto dimming side mirror. I'm just assuming it's auto dimming. It does make sense though. Oh, it looks like it has an aftermarket security system. That doesn't appear to be stock and it actually lit up when I opened the door there. So there's our light control and that security light. We do have power seats, power windows all the way around. Listen, these doors shut. Ooh, 
Still the perfect Mercedes sound. You guys ready? It's no G-Wagon latch. That's probably the ultimate door sound, but this is pretty good, especially for the mileage and the year this thing's been beat on. The door still sounds solid. Speaking of the mileage, it's 172,000 on this old Benz. And the gauge cluster and all the warning lights, they all seem like they still work, so that's pretty impressive. I just noticed the uh, gas gauge is absolutely wigging out. Look at that thing bouncing. Since we're inside the C-Class, let's do a quick walkthrough of the cabin. Over here on the door, we have the power seat controls. It looks like it might even have a power headrest. Don't know what that one is. It might be lumbar or something like that. Light controls. We got some parking light action here, some uh, pull out for fog lights and pull out twice for rear fog light. Check it out. There's an indicator for rear fog light right there. Headlights on. We'll turn that back off so we don't have to hear the beeping. Uh, here's our climate vents up there. The gauges again, cruise control up there on the top stock. And down there we have wipers and turn signals on the main one. Uh, ignition hiding over here on the right side of the wheel, kind of where you'd expect. That's the headrest flip down button. I have tried this with the car on and they do not flip anymore. Uh, door locks. You know, the door locks do work, but for some reason they're not working right now. This does have the old air powered door locks and it's funny to hear them run. It makes a racket. Underneath that we have a digital auto climate control, which is honestly nicely laid out and probably pretty easy to use. And then a dual CD player has been swapped in here, even though it used to have a DVD player of some sort uh, very clearly. We don't even have Bluetooth on this old dual, but we do have an aux in. It's got a, a 3.5 millimeter to two RCA to uh, feed the aux in. There's an old relic down here on the bottom of the console. This is a Jensen 30 pin uh, DIN connector that would go from the old iPod to an old head unit. So there's a lot of stuff that's been left behind in this car. It's been modified and modified and modified over the years, but it's always cool to see the old relics of that, uh, like the iPod days where you had control of your iPod from your head unit. I'd assume in the early 2000s, somebody was balling in this car, just enjoying life and had all the technology that was cool. Uh, it was probably a lot better than that dual, that's for sure. We've got the ashtray right there. It's full of money and uh, we got some cigarette butts. Uh, there's your 12 volt outlet or your lighter because that is a smoker's package in this car. Uh, four power windows right there. There is the trunk. I think that light's showing that it's open even though it is latched shut. Uh, here's our mirror controls. They are broken off for the power mirrors there. Uh, this transmission is the 5G Tronic. So this was the first year of that five speed automatic transmission as well. And maybe they were just looking to the future when they named this thing 5G. What do we have here? We should have some storage that apparently flips over. No. A go. Uh, is this just a case? That's a camera. Well, I can't beat that. I just got a free fake GoPro in the car I only paid 800 bucks for. Uh, I will say that camera's probably worth like 25 bucks. <laughs> Maybe, on a good day, it's probably worth that. But hey, there's a camera in here. All right, we gotta try this. Let's try to turn it on, see if it works. Is that on the front button? GoPro, oh, action camera, that's how fake it is. <laughs> I forgot GoPro's motto, but that is not GoPro's motto. Oh, that's pretty funny. Well, there you go. I got a knockoff GoPro in my cheap Mercedes. I don't know how to turn it back off. What other treasures will we find in this Mercedes? Here's the upper console. We got some change in there. It looks like part of the lock mechanism as well. And if we flip up this one, it's the entire uh, console there. Full of old receipts, registrations, light bulbs. Uh, a cup holder, parts for the car, I, I don't know what that is. We've got all kinds of junk in here and an ice scraper because we're in Kansas, you gotta have the ice scraper. Found a remote here in the door, I wonder what this is for. Let's see, we got a couple of remotes actually. There's that old Jensen uh, DVD player that appears to be missing and what else? Oh, this is for the monitors in the back. And speaking of the monitors in the back, let's open the door and I'm gonna show you guys something you probably haven't seen in a long, long time. This thing has five inch square monitors in the back. There's the IR receiver, it's that little red dot. Um, I haven't played with these or tried to power them on, but there's two of them. So this was quite the setup back in the day. Oh, they've got LED lights swapped into the uh, upper console there. But yeah, five inch square monitors. I'm guessing because that's the only thing that'll fit in this small headrest, but man, those are old. When's the last time you saw a monitor that small? They basically don't exist. 
Power window controls back here. The door panels still look kind of nice. I mean, honestly, uh, if the headliner wasn't falling down and it didn't have mechanical issues, this would be a pretty nice car to this day. It's held up better than I expect. Opening up the passenger side and we have fuel pumps. Look at that. Or parts of fuel pumps, that is. I don't actually see a pump in there. Oh, there's a new ignition cylinder too. It looks like somebody tried to swap that out. Probably was, uh, flaking out on them and there's two drop-in pump assemblies that are missing the pumps so the guy said that they had done some swapping and i assume they were trying to sort out a fuel pump issue all i know is he was right it does run and drive and it did drive on the trailer let's see if there's any other goodies in this car so here's our glove box the manual i was not expecting this to be here so let's open up our case we got the mercedes operation guide maintenance booklet it's the warranty or something ah farmer's insurance and here is uh, a dealer directory for Mercedes dealers, so you can go find service when you're stuck out on the road. Kind of cool. Here we have the original owner's manual. Pretty cool. What else? Anything fun in here? This is some kind of uh, Mercedes club you can join. And there's one more in here. Owner's service and warranty, 1996. The back of the glove box is missing if you look in there. The uh... It's got a trim piece and it's just absolutely missing. Well, that's a complete walkthrough of the interior. I haven't tried out the radio, although I assume it works. And I do think the uh, screens in the back are probably disconnected at this point. They might power up, but unfortunately there's no source. There's no DVD player left. There's no digital media player, nothing in the car that can send video back to those monitors. So let's open the hood up here. The cable that runs the hood latch is completely broken and there's one fin broken out of the grill. So I just reached in there with my noodle nose and released the hood. Now we can open this thing up or, okay, I gotta do that again. Look at that, the hood struts work. This does have gas hood struts, even though it doesn't look like it. It looks like it might be an old GM kind of spring hinge, but nope, there are gas struts and they're buried down in there and incredibly hard to change. So good on Mercedes for those still working. We have a monster of a washer reservoir right here. Uh, here's our ABS pump. And there's been a million repairs done to this thing. You can see uh, overflow lines been replaced here. Air box is there, MAF's there. Honestly, this thing's pretty complete. Pretty complete for what it is. But boy, does it leak oil. I mean, whew, that's gotta get all cleaned up and uh, I gotta get this thing out of the shop soon. Power steering works, the belt's not cracked. I haven't tried the AC, but it might work. Honestly, uh, more things work on this car than should for 800 bucks and it, and it being a Mercedes. All right, that's about everything we need to see under the hood. There's not much there. It does have uh, two electric fans and a uh, clutch fan too. Now I have tried to get in the trunk and I was successful once and then I closed it and I haven't been able to get back in. Uh, it's a disaster as you would expect, but there is a coiled up set of four gauge wire back there because somebody had a system in this thing too. So. Uh, I got some free copper out of the thing once I get back into the trunk. Now it's time for the thing you all want to see. We're gonna fire this thing up so you can hear it run and uh, I might move it back and forth. We're not gonna swing it today. That'll be in the next episode. We're gonna go try to send this thing once I uh, check over the engine, make sure everything's good to go and I can use my arm again and uh, then we can swing it. It's not on swingers, as you can see, uh, nothing's sticking out of the wheels. We're not in Houston. I appreciate swingers, but he was definitely talking about drifting it and this guy, uh, the old owner had tried to drift this thing a lot and I think he went sideways over a curb once, which is pretty impressive. Here we go. The AC works. I was not expecting that. Well, that's pretty impressive. I got to figure out how to turn this thing back off now. I guess hold fan until it shuts off. There we go. Back to off. And that's all we're gonna run it because it's definitely leaked out a bit of oil there and I don't wanna kill this engine. I, I do wanna go swing it. How cool is that wiper? The whole car moves when that thing's on. Give you guys another view of the mono wiper running. You can see it has a cam and it pushes up as it goes across the windshield and then back down as it goes to the edges. One of the coolest wiper designs. Just so you can see how well engineered this wiper is, take a look at the line it makes as it covers the entire windshield perfectly. Honestly, better than most of today's wipers. The mono wiper in itself is probably cool enough for me to have spent the 800 bucks on it. That is awesome engineering. Solid design, old school Mercedes. This car's biggest downfall is it doesn't have a single cup holder. Not even one. What do you think this is, some kind of Ferrari? Uh, nothing in the armrest. It does have a ski pass through. Here's that first aid kit zone, and the first aid kit is missing, unfortunately. But that's it. 
We've got great door sounds and honestly a strangely complete car for very little money. Of course, the cheapest Mercedes you could have bought in the US. We'll do a little bit of troubleshooting and go swing it out in the parking lot after this. I can't wait to see how this thing runs and drives. Honestly, I'm expecting it to be pretty good because Mercedes, the C-Class, my take on the C-Class is it's a slightly better welded Honda Civic, especially the C-Class with the four cylinder. They're basically fancy Honda Civics that are usually seam welded and a little bit quieter. They feel nice, you know, but uh, I mean, you're not buying much more than a Honda Civic. You're just buying more weight and a badge. This car though held up like it was a Honda. I'm impressed. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchchairgo.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. That's her. That's my C220. Let me know what you guys think. Was it a win? Did I get taken in the comments below? Or is any run and drive car worth $1,000? I'm sure we all could have guessed, but it has a black ice air freshener and a cracked windshield.